In this example, we're going to feed a ternary mixture into a flash drum, so the mole fraction is coming in Z1, Z2, and Z3. And we're going to do this isothermally. And this problem statement is that 42% of the feed evaporates, and we want to know for that to occur, what pressure do we have to have in the drum? And then what are these compositions, Y1, Y2, and Y3 being the vapor mole fractions, X1, X2, and X3, being the liquid mole fractions. So this is a system where we have alkanes, very similar molecules, so it's a reasonable assumption. It's ideal solution we can use for Alt's law. And of course, in a flash drum, we're assuming the liquid and the vapor are in equilibrium. So what we're going to do, we're going to pick a basis. I'm going to say the feed flow rate is one mole. Could be per minute, second, doesn't matter because we're calculating the compositions and we're given the fraction that evaporates. So if the feed is one mole coming in, 42% evaporates, then this is 0.42 and this is 0.58. So first we'll write mass balances, namely that the feed, and we'll write this for say component one, where so this is component one, hexane is two, and then heptane is component three. This is equal to the liquid flow rate, or amount, times X1 plus the vapor times Y1. Well, we have similar equations for two and three, so let me pause and write them down, and I'll substitute in some numbers. Also then, for equilibrium, we're going to have Raoult's law for each component. So, for example, for pentane, X1, P1 sat equals Y1 times P. And I'll go to literature and I'll look up P1 sat at 55 degrees, and I get 1.853 bar. Well, similarly, I can write down equations for components 2 and 3. So let me pause and do that. So I've numbered the equations 1 through 6 so far. So let's look at unknowns that we have. So we don't know the liquid phase mole fractions, and likewise the vapor phase mole fractions, and the pressure. So seven unknowns. Right now we have six equations. Well, the seventh equation is that x1 plus x2 plus x3 must add to one. So now we have seven equations, seven unknowns. Now we might be tempted to also write down y1 plus y2 plus y3 equals one. Indeed, that's the correct equation, but it turns out to be redundant. And I'll show later if we add these three equations, equations for the mass balances, and we use equation seven, we end up with this equation. So this is, is not an independent equation. So we have seven equations, seven unknowns. We want to solve these equations simultaneously. And the easiest way is to use something like Excel and use Excel solvers. So that's what we've done here. And of course, then that same type calculation works that we had seven components coming in and separate. So let's look at the results from Excel solve. And so one thing then to check that these three y values indeed add to one zero 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 without us solving this equation. So as we said, that is they're not independent. The other we can check things like is the pressure between the two saturation pressures. So the pressure 0.862 is indeed between the highest saturation and lowest saturation as it should be. And then we can look at the enrichments like the Y1 over X1, which is equal to 2.1. As we would expect, more volatile component enriched in the vapor phase. Let's look at K3, the least volatile component, so Y3 over X3. We substitute the numbers in for that, 0 0.27. So again, as we expect, the least volatile component is actually enriched in the liquid phase. And for K2, we can't predict ahead of time, but it turns out it's slightly enriched in the liquid phase. So, so this is certainly consistent with what what we expect with the check answers that we get from solver to make sure everything's consistent. So finally, let's show why this equation, some of the vapor mole fraction, is not independent. And we'll do that by adding equations 1, 2, and 3 together. So the left side adds to 1. The right side, and I'll pause and write this down. And so this says 1 equals 0 0.58 because one of our equations, number 7, says that the x is at the 1, and then we have 0 0.58. 
0.42 times y1 plus y2 plus y3, or moving to 0.58 to the left side, 0 0.42 equals 0 0.42 y1 plus y2 plus y3. So for this equation to be satisfied, this must be 1, showing that's not an independent equation.